Inside the walls of this West African church, you will find Joshua Blayi preaching. Hallelujah. Once known as General Butt Naked for fighting nude. Though I was naked, not only physically, I was also naked morally. But prior to converting to Christianity, General Butt Naked was feared on these streets during Liberia's civil wars. Before each battle, he said he killed children and ate their hearts. We took off the heart of the children and we wanted to be alive. So there's a pool here that we stretch the child around so that we have access to their ribs and use an ax to rip their back off. A tribal ritual he once believed protected his troops. 14 years of civil war plagued this nation. There were several fighting factions. General Butt Naked's was called Ulamo J. Their original mission was to defend then President Samuel Doe, their fellow tribesmen. Along the way, General Butt Naked admits to being responsible for some 20,000 deaths. So the fighting here was very tense and was very, very strategic and um, deadly. Strategy for this former general, he says, included recruiting child soldiers and rape. So we thought the worst stage that a woman could go through is for her to be uh, violated forcefully before killing her. And what is that supposed to accomplish? Anger, bitterness. Everybody just, just, just bitter because most of the time uh, it is... It is very hard to take the life of another person if you are normal. You can still see bullet holes in one of the buildings where former General Butt Naked fought. But despite the gross crimes against humanity that he himself has admitted to, you won't find his name among a list of former warlords who the Truth and Reconciliation Commission has recommended for prosecution. The reason why, the TRC says, is because in his sorrowful testimony, he was honest. He said, I deserve to be punished for what I did. If that is the decision, I will walk to the court and I will face my fate. And it's part of our policies that if people come clean and speak truthfully, the evidence they provide will not be used against them and they may not be recommended for prosecution. Rebecca Marker also testified before the Fact-Finding Truth and Reconciliation Commission. She still bears the pains of war. We lose our, our family. I lose my house. They raped me, and no one came to my aid in Liberia yet. Life has not been easy for Rebecca as she struggles to survive in her war-torn house. You took away everything and left the place like that. And while the definition of justice differs among victims, for Rebecca, she says prosecution will not bring peace. Vengeance belong to God. You understand? I mean, if the poor go through investigation, that cannot bring my brother back to life. Years after the fighting, the former general also cries for what he's done. He explains he didn't know right from wrong. When he was a seven-year-old boy, he says his Kron tribe recruited him to be a priest. He says he was taught human sacrifice at 11 years old, long before the Civil Wars. I was taught uh, the ritual to be doing it, and I started doing it at that age. Joshua says there was no guilt in killing as a child priest or years later as a warlord. That all changed, he says, when he got a message from Jesus during his last battle. A voice spoke from behind me. The presence of the person was so unusually bright. They spoke my dialect uh, and said, Anju de Keiliwe, which means, my son, why are you slaving? But he finally said, I should repent and live or refuse and die. Repenting for Joshua now includes counseling for ex-combatants who he meets on the streets. We reminded them how we contributed 
for war and we also needed to contribute for peace. And I look at it as uh, a means of giving back to the society that I, I, I destroy ignorantly. A trail of destruction that many in this country, including Joshua, former general but naked, feel will ultimately be judged by God. Seema Mather, CNN, Monrovia.